Sky half. Good luck, bud. D6. All right. We are going to try the modern defense. The Pierce is not a six. We're going to go for a G6. But I'm not going to necessarily commit my knight yet. Oh, this is good. Now when the bishop goes here, I have more power. I don't have to open up the diagonal. It's already there. Let's try to chip away at this. C6. Undermine the center and maybe my queen can slide in sometimes, put some pressure as well. But I'm delaying developing the knight because I want to get a return on this diagonal. It's a flexible move order unless I feel like I'm under pressure. So for example, right here, I'm going to play an annoying move. Queen b6, tickling this pawn, just to see what white's going to do. If they go rook b1, then they can't queenside castle. You touch that rook, you can't go back and, and castle again. That's commitment. Something we're afraid of. You can go rook b1, that's fine. But now I don't have to worry about the queenside castle. So I can develop my knight. There's no queen d2, bishop h6, queenside castle, and attack. The queen did its job. And it's not like the queen on b6 is a very aggressive move. If I get attacked, I can tuck myself right back into the igloo, right? So here, let's go queen a5. See if my opponent can recognize that, uh, oh, this knight's pinned. This knight on c3 defends the pawn, but I'm pinning it, and you can't hang your king. I'm just going to chop that off. Cheers. I could take here first. Shall we do it? Yeah, let's practice. That looks pretty good. And now this bishop. I'm going to take with a bishop. Check. And... Uh, we're going to show good technique now. I'm up a pawn, but I know I'm going to win a second pawn. And if you're up two pawns, you should be able to win a chess game. If not, watch this. We're going to trade. Check. Check. Two pawns up. Let's continue trading. Would you like to trade some more? I'll be very happy if you want to trade. How about now? That is a good move, not to trade. I insist. Let's tickle tickle the bishop, and we're defending the pawn that was actually loose on b7. Okay. A few times a game, I'm going to offer some traps. I'm going to offer um, some candy in an unmarked van. This is one of those opportunities. e6, oh no, I'm hanging this pawn. What happens? Did I just lose a pawn for free? Or is there something else planned that I notice? Rook is on b1, bishop is on b7. What's next? What am I planning here? Because I don't give free stuff. No. no. Anybody? Can anybody figure it out? This rook is not defended by anything. The knight and rook haven't developed. Baked chess expert says rook b8. Well done. Hitting the bishop. And the bishop, even if it goes to e4, doesn't defend. There's a pawn on the way. So this bishop is pinned. And should result in the loss of the bishop. Or the loss of the rook, depending on what white chooses. Good stuff. Hello, Ralph Wiggum. Good evening. We're just playing d6. This was a modern, very similar to its cousin, the Peart's Defense. I gained lots of material with my dark square bishop. Next move, probably going to take with a rook. Why a rook? Oh, so I want to take with a rook. It's tempting to take rook takes bishop. I'm up a piece. That's more than enough to win. There's a better move here. So if you spend a few more seconds, I'm going to give you a clue. I'm not going to take that bishop. I'm not tunnel visioning. I see something else. Check. And instead of winning a bishop, I'm going to pick up the rook, which is more material. Check. 
And I'm gonna put my rook here, because that freezes these two pieces, which means white only has a bishop to play with. Otherwise called masturbation. But uh, yeah, white can't move. Knight c5. I'm gonna trade this off, and these pieces are stuck. Push. Oh, 19 seconds, that's fun. I'm gonna keep my rook here. I'm going to keep pinning these pieces. Just suffocating uh, the position. Uh-huh. Let's trade. Check. King here would be perfect. Check. And let's stack them. Eat. That's cute. The rook is trapped. Very cute. Keep the rook stuck. Thank you. Thank you. Forcing a pawn checkmate. Good game. Sky half. Did you like the rook a2 touch, Dr. Lord Mayo? Is that worthy of uh, kick Cinco? When you force somebody to pawn checkmate, you get some bonus points. C4a. All right, let me go d6. And against the d4 setup, gonna meet it with e5 again. I don't mind the queen trade. We're learning how to build an igloo and win endgames without queens. Okay, if white's not gonna do that, I'm going to take in the middle because I can go knight c6 and hit the queen with tempo. Tempo's nice, that's time. I can catch up in development. Am I gonna offer a queen trade? No, because queens in the middle should be harassed. So I'm going to block with a bishop, preparing knight f6, hitting the queen again. Queen's loose. Okay. Let's continue the game. Let's tickle the queen again, hoping for queen d4 or queen e3. Then I have a check from behind. Thoughts? This isn't the best move, but I want to go fishing. I'm feeling frisky right now. See, sometimes you just got to give your opponent a chance to go wrong. Now let's analyze. Is that queen hanging? Yes, it is. Sorry, James. Sorry, bud. Check. Let's go d6. We go knight f6, tickle the pawn on e4 with Yep. Sometimes people just forget. Tatiana did not forget. Let's try again. With this knight. Let's tickle this pawn. Well done, well done. Let's try one more time. Get two attackers on d4. All right, all right. That trade is okay. I can take with the knight or take with the pawn. I'm gonna choose the pawn so that this bishop can develop. Okay, and that's why I want to develop the bishop. I'm going to put it right here. This is more like an e4, e5 position. Sometimes d6 is going to transpose. How do you miss a 26 yard field goal? Like what's going on there? That is brutal. I needed that to cover the spread. How do you miss a 26 yarder? Oh man. All right, sorry. All right, bishop b5. I don't like that. Let's trade queens. So this pawn is hanging, and my own pawn is hanging. Let's enter. See what happens. Whoa! Now, bishop g5, some of you would be like, Eric, take this. This is a, takes the pawn, hits the rook, and there's discovered ideas. There are discoveries. Guess what's another discovery when you take on f2 with a knight? Rook d8 checkmate. Holy smokes. Rook d8 checkmate. That is uncalled for. 
Let's castle. Let's castle. Get me out of there. I'm not risking that. Fish on fish says no chance he sees it. Is Tatiana he? It's true, it's very possible Tatiana is a he these days. Okay. He, he was planning it. Well, now I can take it. Now I can take. There's no more Rook D8. Oh, that worked out. We're going to take this Rook. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And let me go F6. Reinforcing this pawn and hitting the Bishop. My next move is going to be Bishop B6. Completing development, and we're up a rook. Well, we're up an exchange, so I just want to trade, 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 trade into a winning endgame. Please take my bishop. Thank you. I'm going to take with the a pawn towards the center. I'm going to go c5, go away bishop. I'm going to go rook d8, offer a trade. I'm going to take this pawn as well. Thank you. I don't see... My next move might be bishop d5, getting some more trades in. Okay, okay. And now let's practice trading. So I'm actually going to give up material to trade. I'm going to give up my rook for a pawn. I'm actually going to win this knight. So I, I, I gave up a rook for a knight and a pawn. I'm up four pawns. Now I'm up five pawns. And the less material, the better. Now I'm up a bishop and five pawns. I'm going to put my rook back over here to dominate. I'm going to put my bishop right here to gang up on g2. I'm going to take here and say check. I'm going to go bishop here. And I'm going to prepare pawn to g5 and make sure that's checkmate. Can the king move anywhere? Doesn't look like it. Checkmate! Oh, try hard. Let's go d6. Knight f6. I'm telling you, you can get to 800 elo and people still hang some pawns here. I'm going to take this. Thank you very much. And I said, you can double up. You, I played d6, but once you give me that second pawn, I'll go d5 and try to close the counterplay. Gifts are nice. And now we just develop and enjoy the benefits. e6, let's get castle. Scurry off. Pawn up. Should we trade? The reason I want to trade is I want my opponent to take on e4 the knight so I can recapture the pawn and fork the two pieces. So let's give them that opportunity. Oh, they didn't blunder that one. All right, all right. Can't have everything. Can't have it all. Time the castle. We're up a pawn. It's not the best pawn in the world, but let's say we even lose it. We're castled and we have the bishop pair. Mm hmm. This pawn's a goner. Maybe I can come up with some other counterplay. Maybe we can go bishop b4 so that your knight's pinned. Now I'll just remove your knight and alleviate some of the pressure on e4. Like this. Still up a pawn. Now let's get, her, get rid of this pesky knight. Thank you. And now I think we are up a solid pawn. Because this pawn on e4 is well guarded. I'm gonna put my queen right on c6 in case my opponent gives me second pawn. They didn't. Alrighty. Let's bring the rooks towards the middle. They're the last. 
pieces to the puzzle. Okay, let's go b6, so I don't have to worry about defending this anymore. I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna double up maybe. Perfect, look at that. Is that a free pawn? I think so. Let's gobble. And I don't like this bishop bearing down on me, so I'm gonna go e5 and shut it off. We're up two pawns. So I can take this pawn, then white takes there. But what if I take here first? Let's calculate. Pawn takes bishop, pawn takes queen, pawn takes queen, pawn takes pawn, and I still have my bishop, but white is losing their bishop. I think that uh, picks up a piece. So let's go for that calculation. Nice. I take this pawn, I lose my bishop. So let's retreat somewhere that defends both c7 and f5. At this point, it might be time for some good chess habits like h6, so I don't have to worry about the back rank. We won. e6. Yes. We're going to attack this pawn in case they blunder it. Good night, Yasser. Thanks for hanging out. We got them thinking already. Alrighty. Well, I instead of moving my knight, we're going to trade. Not a bad, bad trade-off. White moved their pawn twice. I didn't have to do anything. And now this knight is a little annoying for me, so let's trade it off. I want to get rid of it. And I want to get rid of, rid of it with a piece that I haven't developed yet. They're pinning me. But fortunately, when I have my pawn on b7 and, uh, and c7, I can just go c6 and break the pin. And if you move your bishop, I would take the knight. That's This is a good move. So do I want to take the bishop or take the knight? I take the bishop and white takes my bishop, then I can't castle anymore. So I'll recapture the knight. Tempting though. All right. I want to try this move, bishop g4 hitting the queen. Because if white plays f3, then they have a very weak very weak on the dark squares. I've induced the weakness and I'm thinking ahead. I'm just gonna move my bishop somewhere out of the way. Like here. And if white castles, check! Because they've weakened the dark squares. They've given me a diagonal. Okay, didn't fall for it. That's very good. White wants to go d4. I want to challenge that, so I'm going to go pawn e5. Oh! Double attacking f7 and b7. But where is our queen supposed to go? I've created an igloo. I'm going to use it. Queen c7. Just defending both of them. All right. Let's give a check. I want a castle and giving a check eases things potentially now we castle and white has issues developing these pieces meanwhile all of my minor pieces are out and i'm getting ready to bring my rooks in or harass the bishop i can consider going you know b5 next if i want to get rid of this 
pressure. So, does this bishop have escape squares after d3? The queen is blocking b3, the pawn is blocking d3. Therefore, what should black play in this position? I see a bishop that's trapped, if I can harass it. So, what's the move? Got to make sure people are paying attention. Don McGee says b5. Correct. Keep it simple. My pawn defends b5. I attack the bishop. And I will be profiting. So this is a good counterattack because it might distract me. But what you have to realize here is when I take the bishop, I'm also hitting the queen. Because let's say I take the pawn first. It's not a bad move. I could take this pawn, which is hanging then the bishop does have an escape square. So I went up free pawn, but the bishop escapes. I'm going to take the bishop first, because it hits the queen. I went on bishop for the pawn. That's an even better trade. All right. I got something lined up for, uh, for Buddy over here. So I'm going to take now, because I got, got some pressure here. And when you have two bishops, you want to open them up. Let's grab. My next moves are probably going to be bringing the rook in. The eight or eight, they both look good. Oh, trades. I'm not against trading, I'm up a piece. Sure. Automatic. Whoa, rook f7. There's nothing that guarding that. I'll take it. Thank you. Oh, queen d8. There's nothing guarding that one either. That's a check though. Oh, nothing guarding that. Nothing guarding this. Time for checkmate. Check. And we're setting up the same one. G5. Nice try. Monkey D, good luck. Knight F6. Okay, Monkey D, at least is defending. There we go. E5. We're getting ready for the end game. D5 is definitely a response. I'm going to go C6. Add a bit of tension to the center. Bishop G5. I'm not worried about the trade, so let's see if white's willing to trade. I like having the bishop pair. Thank you. Are we gonna fianchetto in this one? You could if you wanted to. But no, we'll go with g5 first. I'm feeling energetic. I'm just going to attack a little bit, see what happens. I could fianchetto, but how about I put my bishop here? White's actually doing, doing well. I mean, they're defending, but let's come up with some other ideas. I want to go h5. You think we can get away with h5? h4, sorry, h4. Bishop takes, bishop takes, queen takes. I thought I could nab this knight on d2. What do y'all think? So after bishop takes, bishop, queen takes, I think I can pick up the knight on d2. I think my opponent missed that, this long-ranged bishop. Yep. Oh, there's a check here. Okay, I can block. But then they take here. Holy smokes. Oh, 
Well, now this game is crazy. Jeez Louise. Are we here for a good time? Because I have some crazy lines I can introduce. We're gonna do it for the people. Take all my material. I'm going for checkmate. I'm all in. I'm all in here trying to set up a mate. This is my only hope. Pawn H3, trying to set up checkmate. All in. All right, let's calculate. If I go king up, queen f5 trades the queens, and then we're down everything. If I go king here, same thing. I go king here, takes with check. I go back, there's a, maybe the repeat. Let's try f6. Okay. Are there any checks after king g6? Don't see him. I just want queen g2. Just one checkmate. I gave everything up for this. I don't see it though. That was a risky, risky variation. If it takes, I'll just take back with a king, a desperado. Let's move somewhere where there's no more checks. Are there any checks after king g6? I don't see them. And now we can pre-move queen g2 checkmate. Checkmate. Sajad from Iran. We're going d6. e5. Knight d7. I'm gonna take with the pawn back so this bishop opens up. I'm gonna go c6, the igloo that we've been practicing. Hey! Are you just giving me a knight? All right. Thank you. Sure. So I have an extra knight for the cost of a pawn. I'll make that trade. Let's find some safety for the king. Make sure this knight doesn't hang because the bishop was attacking it. Oh, okay, now the knight has to move. Here, no, here, no, here, no. This blocks my bishop. This doesn't look like it's doing anything. G4, however, I like the idea of the next square, which is knight e3, like this. How's that move? Hitting c2 and g2. It should be four defends it. Didn't see it though. Whoa, knight a3. Knight a3 defends c2. But what if I get rid of the knight and then take on c2? Yes, that looks even better. Because I could take this bishop. You're like, Eric, take the free bishop. You're totally right. But let's calculate. Knight takes bishop, check. King comes to f2 and my knight gets trapped. So I'd have to sacrifice it for a pawn. I do win a pawn, but my I don't win a full piece, right? I mean, there's more lines than that. We could go further. Knight takes g2 check, king here, bishop f5, king takes knight, bishop b4 check, and I pick up an additional rook. You're right, if you saw all that, very well done. I'm gonna be lazy, get rid of the defender, and pick up this bishop because there's no strings attached. Are there any strings attached to this? I'm hitting the rook. Cheers, thank you. Okay, now, now I'll take this. I've had enough food. 
I'm up three pieces. Time to develop this bishop so the rook can join. So I'm gonna go bishop here so I can go bishop e4. Bishop e4. The knight's trapped, but at least it's guarded. Chomp, chomp. What's my next move? Probably rook d8 check. Bring the rook in. Check. And now this knight should come in. The knight is going to gallop in and join its comrade on, on g2 over here. Lots of juicy moves. I'll take here. If king here, I have knight d1 check. It's bullying, but... It's... It's only bullying if you guys don't learn from this, and that's the problem. You guys have to start getting better at chess. Speedruns are bullying. No, you're supposed to learn. The problem is you guys just don't learn. That's that's your problem. And then you're right, this is bullying. You're supposed to actually learn from this. Otherwise, I look like the bad guy. So I'm going to take this rook, because I should take the rook. Thank you. Now, this rook... I haven't touched yet, so let's bring it in. I'm gonna find a mating net here. We're gonna find a mating net. We're gonna checkmate this king. Check. Is rookie three checkmate, my knight defends it, my knight defends the rook on h2, the king has no escape squares, looks good to me. There we go. Oof. D6 here. F4, we haven't encountered that. I like the setup, actually. First things first, let's tickle this pawn. Hey, I am not bribing my opponents. We've won so many pawns this speed run because people just don't pay attention to knight f6 and they hang a pawn. Cheers. I'm pretty happy with that extra pawn. Now let's block this bishop. And let's develop this bishop. Now I go e6, so this bishop can join the party. Let's give a check. If king h1, maybe I go knight f2. If d6, d4, it's okay. Because now my knight's not being attacked. So I will just move back. Yay. Solidify the center. Pawn to f5. My knight is now very strong. And castles. Oh! I didn't think you could take my knight here. So are we going to take this way or that way? Well, let's calculate. D takes e4. I can take here with check. If I do f takes, I activate my rook. And this bishop is still blocked. I think f takes is better. Attack c6, opens up the f-file, and I still got threats on the knight. I'm playing white here, I probably want to, I mean, my knight's a goner, I'd probably play h3 first. No, 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 now I'm going to eat, thank you. Chop, chop. F5. I'm trying to understand that move. Uh, it's hard. What if I bring my rook in? My next move is going to be queen h4. And then this knight and then this rook. Okay, okay. Let's go here. Bishop takes. That's That move works. That move works. But I'm going to be a boring guy. I'm up a piece. 
What does that mean? Trades are good. So just bishop e4. Trades are good when you're up a piece. Trade, 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 trade. That's what we're going to do. Good technique. And now we just want to bring the remainder, the remainder of our army into the game. Okay. Let's not hang the queen. Now I'm threatening h6. Does it work? Is there a threat here? I don't see it. h6. Pin that bishop. Thank you. Should have taken with the queen since we're supposed to trade. Don't support these guys. I'm going to take with a pawn. Just because I have a feeling they're going to... Oh, I thought they were going to hang something. I didn't take with a knight because of queen d5 check. But I could have done it. All right. Now let's push these pawns. Push. 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 Mm. Let's retreat for a second. Let's offer a queen trade. I'm actually threatening this. Hopefully my opponent doesn't see it. I should have traded queens when I had the chance. Oh, no. Stop it. I do not want to draw. No. Perfect. Check. Now, would you take the rook next move or not? Because with seven seconds, you might get flagged if you take the rook. So look for better. Check. Perfect. Oof, that was close. There we go. Robert, Germany. All right, we go D6 versus everything. D6, E5. All righty. And we're going to practice the Philidor setup, which is with C6, D6. And you can play this really quickly. Building the igloo, knight d7. This knight goes to f6. This bishop goes to e7. And then you castle. And where does the queen go? c7. You're wondering, where does this bishop go? I don't know yet. I'm going to try to gain some space elsewhere first. Let's go b5, a5. Push the pawns a little bit. And maybe the bishop can go here. But I'm not under any pressure. That's good. This is a very easy decision. The knights are stepping on each other. If I didn't have this knight here, the bishop would be more mobile. So h6, encouraging this exchange. Well, what is this move, Robert? My pawn defends and my bishop defends. Buddy! Robert! You're making it too easy. I'm trying to teach the viewers and I played bishop f8. And what can I do here? The bishop's hitting the queen. Thank you for the queen. Bishops do move forward. Yeah. No. The Philidor has some similarities like the hippo in that you wait for blunders. You play a bit conservatively, but there's some bite. People still fall into things. Up a queen. We're happy to trade. Cheers. Now this knight can develop. Bring in this bishop. Now the bishop's developed, so do I want to go this way or this way? Well, pretty easy. Because this pawn, I think, is loose. Is it loose? Anything defending? Nope. Thank you. F3. All right. I'm going to move backwards. I got the bishop pair and the queen. Let's try a tricky move. 
The king is here. So I'm gonna go queen a7, setting up a discovered, a discovered check. The most dangerous kind of check in chess. Because it implies I can move my knight anywhere on the board, and that's gonna check the king because of the queen check. Queen a7. There's some potential here. Trying to block the diagonal. Sorry, I got my own plans. I'm going to take this pawn of the check and the queen's coming in to say hi. Check. Black to play. But you're thinking helmet's on. Black to play right here. The file, I'm waiting for you to give me a move. Queen f3, says the file. No. That's an illegal move. White's king is on f3. Queen e3. Good, good, good. Redemption. Not queen b2, jaunty. The bishop defends on h6. And the bishop on e6 covers the escape square. Well done. Yes. Good job, chicken pants. Alrighty. We get some black games, d6. We're gonna try knight f6, tickle the spawn. People keep blundering it. f3 is a good response. And now we're gonna practice my setup. Pawn to e5. Okay, they don't trade. So the king's Indian is with the bishop on g7. But you can also do a different style. I'm gonna go knight h5 and bishop g5. Trading off the dark squared bishop, so I'm left with a good bishop left. My, do I want to trade? Sure. We'll trade. We'll play this position. And castle. Grabbing a lot of space there. Okay, okay. Is this safe? It looks safe. But white? White's grabbing a lot of space. I'm a little intimidated. Gonna play an important move here. Pawn to a5. What's the point? I want to get my knight to c5, and a5 kicks away white's ability to kick the knight out easily. And my knight on c5 is a good square. It's involved, it's safe. And what's the alternative? What else would be a good square? Pawns, these pawns are on the color of their bishop, which is not helping. Uh, white. I'm actually going to go h6, so they're stuck on light squares. If there's an endgame, I could put some pressure on. Okay. I'm going to play something a little aggro. Bear with me. It's creative, but it's aggro. e5. Oh. I'll tell you what I plan. c takes b5, bishop d7, hitting it. And after pawn a4, the only move to defend it, I was going to go knight takes a4. Because then if the rook recaptures, then I have bishop takes b5 check, I pick up the rook. But he ignored it. Well, I'm just going to take the pawn. Thank you very much. Still ignoring it. What's a good developing move here, Defile? Give me a good developing move that looks good. Good, natural, strong. Five, four, three, two, one. Chess ninjas move. Rook b8. Bishop a6, honorary mention. We'll use bishop a6 as well. Let's do it. All right, tactics. Let's introduce some tactics. Tactics. Rook takes b2. Check. Check. Takes. And push. Picked up a second pawn. Hey. Check. Let's dance around here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to eat all the pawns. Check. Check. 
Just kidding. Wasn't a check. I'm gonna bait. I really want them to take this spawn because then I can trade rooks. And if I trade rooks, I can't lose this game. Perfect. Rookie eight, they have to trade because the rook's pinned to the king. And now we have to show we can win a game. Okay. Bishop in two pawns versus the king. Let's push up. Let's push the pawns and make sure they don't blunder. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Push. And we'll promote to a rook. Check. Wait. Alrighty. Uh, Brazilian, let's go d6. Knight f6. Don't give me that pawn. Good. Finally. Finally, somebody's defending the center pawn. We're going to go e5. Hmm. Let's play knight d7. So should we take with a knight or pawn? You can make an argument for both, but I like taking with a pawn so that this bishop develops. And now I play c6 to take away these squares. So my queen can slide over. Oh, well that's... Let's go h6 first. If you're willing to trade, I'm happy to trade as well. Because the bishop pair is good. The bishop pair is good, and if the queens are traded off... Hmm... Well, let's threaten this. If white's moving backwards, let's bring in some threats, okay? Castle, can't complain about that. This pawn's loose in case white queens had castles. And now, the queen on d3 looks a little funny to me. I want to set up something here. And you know what I was saying? Like, look for ways, look for ways to, to win. Like, try to create, you know, tactics and pressure. It's not always going to fall uh, in your lap here. Um, I need to move this knight to further my development. And I notice the queen is a little funny moving around. We have a few ideas. Exactly. I'm going to go rook d8. I could have gone knight b6 first, but my idea is to go knight b6 with a discovered attack. Discovered attacks are very effective. People just don't see them coming. In this case, my opponent did, unfortunately. Because if white castled here, and after knight b6, the queen's trapped. Immediately. They have to give up a piece. Okay. But why are you not supposed to bring your queen out early in the openings very much? Because they can get harassed easily. So with that logic, right, harass the queen. b5. And I'm going knight b6. And now what's my move? Harass the queen. The queen's naturally should not be running around. Keep it simple. I'm, all I'm doing is developing and attacking the queen. It should be six. Well done by Fine Brian. Yes. And now there's issues. Now there's issues. Queen doesn't have any squares, so you got to throw a piece out just to give the queen some space. Thank you. Let me take that. Thank you. So I want a piece. Happy with that. I don't need more. White has a pawn for a piece, which is nowhere near enough. And look at the rest of my pieces. My Everyone's developed. If you're not going to castle, I'm going to punish you. My bishop and my queen are aimed at f2. And white's just ignoring development. That's, that's a recipe for disaster. So we take. Thank you. Up two pieces. What are we supposed to do? Trade, 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 trade. Trade. I can grab this pawn. Oh, I need to trade off a little bit more, but maybe I'll checkmate white as well. 
There's a couple threats here, right? So after rook d2, I have a very sneaky move. Okay, wasn't allowed. Do we trade? Or do we look for better? Eighteen seconds. Are you confident winning if you trade? I'm not confident, you guys. Check. And now we need the tough move. The king's gonna slide over here. Need to find a move. Discover checks are effective. Don't forget that. But if I move my bishop here, the queen can take. Check. That's right. Here we go. D6. Pickle the pawn. Knight f6. E5. And knight bd7. We're going d6. This d6 setup. Okay, here will I go knight d7? No. It's more in response to d4. We'll go bishop b7 and castle first. Unless we're being hit. Being hit, then I go knight d7. If there's no pressure on the e5 pawn, you don't have to go knight d7. Knight d7 is to reinforce c5 because the e5 pawn is kind of an important pawn in keeping uh, white from expanding too much. Let's develop the bishop this way. Let's play a little bit differently. This setup just screams, I hate ambition. I'm just taking it slow at the start, that's all. Keeping it simple. Knight d5. I don't want to lose my bishop pair. Let me trade. Go c6. So this is a maneuver I like to do sometimes. Um, first move, I'm going to go knight d7. Why? I want to go knight c5 and we can win the light squared bishop. Which would be nice. Should be 3 kind of stops that. But I have another maneuver. King h8, I want to go f5 and activate the rook and put pressure on f3 because there's no pieces of white that's reinforcing f3. It's only the queen. So we can try to build some pressure here. f5, f5 next move. Good move, good move. Gonna keep the pin. Now I gotta think twice about f5 because I go f5, white takes, I take. It might be g4. We'll see. Hmm. You might be like, well, doesn't that weaken white's king? It does, but if they win a piece, there's a saying, a piece is a piece. The saying in chess, a piece is a piece is a piece. I'll take an open king if I'm up a piece. So f5, pawn takes pawn, rook takes pawn, g4. Don't really see anything good there. That's no fun. Okay, we'll play an easy natural move. Queen c7 to connect the rook. Usually I keep my pawn on e5 unless I see something good when I take on d4. I try to keep it symmetrical. Now I see a move. I don't know if it works. My idea is after takes, I'm gonna go e4. Not rook take, I'm gonna go e4. I'm trying to take advantage of the pin. Are we going to move our bishop? No, we're going to take with tempo first. Now we are a piece for two pawns. Now it's time to start trading. Win material, then trade material. Win material, then trade material. That's what we're doing. It's not that clear. Two pawns is close to enough for a piece. It shouldn't be quite enough. Hmm. All right. Let's start expanding a bit. I want to trade. Will you let me trade? Bishop c1 is a good move. I didn't expect them to play it. How about here? Queen g3. Mm. Oh! Threatening uh, some nasty stuff. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know what?
I need my queen to defend h7. I'm not going to take right away because my opponent probably thinks it's checkmate and they're wondering why the chess.com checkmate notification hasn't popped up yet. I'm going to let them figure it out. There we go. We've all been there. Why isn't it checkmate? Oh shit. And now I'm going to put my bishop here. I'm going to set up a mate soon. Gonna start taking away squares away from the king. Got seven. Okay, okay. Why do I put my bishop here to, to cut off cut off some squares? Now the H file is open. And now hopefully you see why the king, why the bishop is here. I didn't take the rook because I want checkmate here. Oh, whoa, 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 shit. Sorry, I just got a mouse slip there. That was, uh... I had to checkmate, I had to do it. I was talking a bit much. Last one, we got d6. Queen h5 and a, oh, some energy. Let's go knight f6, double attack. Alrighty, uh, this is not good. You're not supposed to bring your queen out early. Let's block with a pawn. Is this undefended? It looks like it. Thank you. Cheers. Now we're just uh, up a pawn. Let's fork the queen and the bishop and win that light squared bishop. If we get a chance. Actually, you know what? Change of plans. White has no pawns in the center. The bishop blocks this. And we've just picked off d4 pawns, so we have a chance of getting a huge center and just fully um, running white over. I can go d5 next move because my knight will be defended, right? Defends, bishop defends. I can go e4 and just steamroll. Because yeah, this bishop was awkwardly placed. Queen h5 playing it early, man, that's not good. Take with the knight or take with the pawn? Take one of the knights with tempo. You like tempo. Because it hits the queen. Oh, d3 is coming to pin. Let's start with bishop c5, right? Hitting the queen again. If d4, that's okay. Then they're not threatening d3 anymore. Oh, here. Well, that looks awkward. We're here to attack, right? So let's go queen f6, add some more pressure. And then castle. Rookie eight. If d3, my knight can go back to d6 and so, ooh. oof, queen g3. Now, if you're gonna be somebody who plays their queen out early, you gotta at least know what a safe square is and what a unsafe square is. And queen g3 is not a safe square. You gotta be good at queen play. So, buddy here isn't, and that's what we're gonna take. And that's why I'm gonna go bishop f5, develop this piece, and then bring the knight in. Gifts are good, gifts are good. Let's take this. Let's take that, cheers. Take this. And check me. Good game. Thanks for watching another episode of my D6 speedrun. If you like our content, all I ask is that you subscribe to the channel below. It's going to notify you every time we release a video. And if you want to move on to the next episode of the speedrun, just click over there.